Hey, y'all. So I'm just getting my eye. <laughs> hey, y'all. We are here for day 21 of the 20... Y'all, we here for <laughs> day 21 of the 30-day challenge on how to improve your relationship. I am your girl, Marshawn Olanio, and I am your life and relationship strategist. I help men and women improve their relationship, which is why you decided to show up today. You are here because you want to improve your relationship. You want your relationship to get better. You want your connect connection to get better. You want your communication to be better. You want your relationship to be on point. So thank you so much for coming out and showing up. Thank you for being consistent. Thank you for just coming to say hello, okay? Yes, I messed up in the beginning. That's why you're laughing, but it's okay. <laughs> it's all right. We out here today. So um, why are we here today? What is it that you can improve on your relationship today? Hey, Tasha, I see you. So Today, we're going to talk about relinquishing. Hey, Landers, I see you. Hey, nephew, what's going on? Um, today, we're going to talk about relinquishing your relationship expectations. Hey, Eric, I see you. Thanks so much. Good morning. Um, relinquishing your relationship expectations. I know that all of us have relationship expectations and expectations in general, but sometimes those expectations can take us down a rabbit hole okay so first of all let's go ahead hey Ta Tamara you made it today you made it hey <laughs> so uh today we're going to talk about um the definition let's define expectations first okay so expectation is a strong belief that something will happen or be that case in the future. And a lot of times we get stuck in our expectations, the expectations that we have for our spouse. We get stuck there. And when things don't go our way, we have a tendency to be super disappointed, to get irritated. We, 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 yes, you and me. Or is it just, you know what, maybe it's just me. I have a hard time sometimes when I am in my relationship with my husband and I am like, uh, uh, okay, say for instance, so my birthday came up. I want him to know what I want on my birthday, but I really want him to be a mind reader and just do it. I really don't want to tell him what to do because then it's not a surprise for me, right? But I also know that that is not his strong area. So because I know that that's not his strong area, why am I setting myself up for failure? Why am I setting myself up to be disappointed? Why am I setting myself up to not get what I want? Because I want him to be a mind reader and I do not want to tell him. Because for me, if I have to tell you, then it's no fun. It's no fun if I have to tell you. Like, surprise me. Surprise me. So, I'm setting myself up for failure, y'all. Because I know that this is a weak area for my husband. He is not a good gift giver. He don't even think about it. So he just want me to tell him and then he going to get said gift. Well, for me, again, it's not that fun. But of course, because I want that gift, don't get it twisted. I do share it with him so he can get that gift. But for me, it would be fun -er if he just knew. So a lot of times we think that our spouse is just a mind reader. And so then we don't tell him, right? Uh, Tamara says, preach, ha, 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 my mind does too much, so that's a setup. Yes, you setting yourself up. You setting yourself up for failure. You setting yourself up to be in pain. You setting yourself up to be annoyed. You setting up yourself and your spouse and your boo to have a horrible evening. All because you didn't share what you thought they should already know. We have to be better at sharing our expectations so when that date or that um, event comes up, then we'll get what we ask for. We'll get what we want instead of just expecting our spouse to know. Because our spouse is just not going to know. They're not. They're not. As much as we want them to just know, they are not going to just know. Again, those expectations are going to set you up for failure and for pain. It's also going to set your relationship up to possibly even fail. Because if you're not explaining, if you're not communicating with you what you want to your spouse, to your boo, eventually that gets old. Eventually your spouse is like, man, I can never make this person happy. So if I can never make this person happy, why am I even here? Why am I putting all this time, energy, and effort into building up this relationship, building up the communication, 
trying to give her or trying to give him what he wants, but they're never satisfied. But that satisfaction or lack thereof of it is coming from your expectations of it. Hey, Millie, I see you. Thanks for watching. So that is your thing. <laughs> That's your thing that you putting on your spouse. You actually put an extra pressure on your spouse to give you what you want, but you're not telling them what you want. Staying in that uh, mindset of expecting something makes us stay stuck in the past. It does. It makes us stay stuck in the past. And then when we start to think about all the things that we're not getting from our relationship, that we're not getting from our spouse, we don't start to like that relationship no more. But a lot of that is because of you. Yes. You weren't expecting that. A lot of that is because of you. We, we, okay, we have to learn how to speak up. We have to learn how to communicate what we need. We have to learn how to communicate exactly what we need be as specific as possible so your spouse can do the things that you want them to do so again i go back to me so on my birthday i did tell my spouse my birthday's coming up i want something you can surprise me and so what he's been doing now and i actually told him to do this long time ago and he's listening which i love so i told him long time ago when i'm speaking when i say something that i want just surprise me and get that thing later on because you know that I want this thing. You don't have to give it to me that day. But because my spouse, this my, is this my boo. He's not a good gift giver. So if we're just speaking in generalized terms, there is no pressure. And he's like, okay. So, so what he did is, I was talking about this jacket. I love to wear his jackets. So sometimes I want to wear his jackets when he got on the jacket, right? With that being said, for my birthday, he got me one of the same jackets. Different color, but it's the exact same jacket. Love that. He knows that I need the new my, um, glasses frames because he had already started that. He started getting me glasses frames. And so I need to upgrade my prescription. So he got me the glasses frames. I love it because I'm just speaking in general. There is no pressure put out there, but he still knows that I want something. I always want something, but I get it. Give it to me on my special day, whatever. I don't care, but that lets me know that he's actually listening to me. That lets me know that he cares about what I have to say. That lets me know that he cares about our relationship together because he wants to see me happy. He wants to do the right thing, right? He doesn't want to let me down. So with that being said, he's not letting me down because he's listening to me. And then he's getting me the very thing that I'm asking for, the very thing that I say that I need. He just gets, for me, I receive it at a later date. But on that date, I'm like, oh, wow, you gave me the jacket. It's a very, it ain't even nothing big per se. It's a jacket. But he got it for me. I didn't have to get it. It was just something that we were talking about. The glasses frame. I told him that. Something that we were talking about. So I was excited on my birthday. My birthday was super simple, but it, I was excited. Because he got me what I wanted. But that, but I did not just expect him to just know. So we both do this now. When we just speak, we write it down, make a mental, mental note, whatever it is. And then we get that thing later on. Because I know that I'm going to make you happy if I get this thing for you. And we don't always have to wait on birthdays or special days, anniversaries to get things for your spouse. That's not what I'm saying. However... I'm talking about the expectations, and if there is a specific date, a specific um, uh, event that is coming up that you want your spouse to do a specific thing for, then you need to tell your spouse about that specific thing that you want them to do, because otherwise you are setting yourself up for failure. Because a lot of times, and every time really, the relationship is, it, it can only be created by consistently connecting through meaningful intentions. And your meaningful intention in this case is to be specific as possible. So your expectations can be met. But don't, don't make your spouse a mind reader. Don't make them a mind reader because you're just going to set yourself up for failure. Now, a few of the expectations, the common expectations where we mess up at in our relationship. I have a few of them. I wrote them down. And so I want to make sure that I tell you these things. All right. How many of y'all can feel me out there? How many of y'all can feel what I'm saying about these expectations? <laughs> All right. So for some of you out there, this is men and women who like to have sex every night. Keep in mind, that's your expectation, especially if you have not said it. 
All right. If you want to have sex every night, that's something that you need to have a conversation about. And if you don't, if your spot, if your partner is not up for every single night, then you need to come up with a compromise because you don't want them to be stressed out that they feel like they always have to give you sex when they're not willing and ready to always give you sex because literally tired is an excuse. It's a good one, actually. <laughs> you know, you got a whole bunch of stuff. Life is happening all around you. But you don't want to put the pressure or make your spouse feel bad about not being able to do something. Another thing that we do, we express, we expect our spouse to express the love for, for us in the way that we want them to express it, which is a good thing. But if you guys have never had a conversation about your um like love language and how they can actually meet your expectations in this area then you will be consistently disappointed you're just expecting your spouse to know you're expecting them to be your mind reader mm -mm, don't do that another thing that we expect we expect when we have our free time that our partner's free time is always going to match up with ours that's not true which is why I talk about scheduling y'all time together because that way you know that this is the time you'll be able to spend with your spouse. I know, it don't sound sexy. I know that. I know that it don't. But if you want to spend the time that you want to spend with your spouse, then schedule it. Schedule it. Make sure it gets done. Make sure you continue with that um, communication. Make sure that you continue with the uh, intimacy and the connection, etc. Another thing, the common expectations that we have in a relationship. This one is more toward the men, but women do it too. Anyway, we expect the woman to always handle the kids. It shouldn't be that way. <laughs> they both are kids. Okay? So just chip out a little bit more, men. Y'all can help out a little bit more. That's all I'm saying. All right? Now for women, this one goes mainly for you guys, <laughs> which is we expect the men to do most of the manly things that we, that we consider the manly duties. So just like men expect us to take care of the house and including the kids a lot of times, the women expect the men to take care of all of the manly, manly stuff like what we what we consider to be the manly stuff such as taking out the trash right so whatever you consider to be the manly stuff kind of start chipping away and breaking that down whatever you consider to be the woman's job the womanly thing start chipping that down because you can do it too <laughs> yes you can do it just like she can or you can do it just like he can don't just expect that that thing is going to happen in your relationship that it's going to be taken care of because you're setting yourself up for failure you're setting yourself up for resentment to set in you're setting yourself up to be annoyed by your spouse by your partner yes another thing that we do that we expect to do is to fix our partner we expect to fix our spouse we can't do that if you are not ready to be in a relationship wholeheartedly with the person that's standing in front of you because your partner is the only person that can fix themselves if they want to so if you are not satisfied and happy with the person that is right in front of you and not try to fix him not try to fix her you're gonna have a whole bunch of problems you're going to be annoyed all the time. You're not going to be satisfied. You're going to be ticked off. You're going to have unnecessary arguments just because. Just because. And then the final thing that I want to bring up is that <laughs> we expect relationships, specifically our romantic relationships, to be set up like that in the movies. Where they go off and live happily ever after. And I'm not saying that that cannot happen. But what I am saying is that the movie set us up for failure because only thing that we see them go through is that one, that one big fight, that one big thing. They break up or whatever. There's some turmoil. They see each other, whatever it is. They going back and forth, right? And then at the end, they get back together and they ride off into the sunset or whatever to build their life. The part that we miss, the part that the movies miss 
is that life, that building that life. They miss out on all the steps that it takes to build that happy romantic life after the movie ends. And that's where we're at. We're in that part where after the movie ends and the continuation of the maintenance that you have to put in to building that happy romantic relationship. That's where we're at. So after you get the guy, after you get the girl, right? Because we're all there. That's why you're here. You want to improve your relationship. So you already got the guy. You already got the girl, at least in most cases. And now it's time to build that happily ever after. But that takes time. It's a journey. It's not something that you wake up and do overnight. You have to truly let down your walls, be vulnerable, learn your spouse, learn your partner, flaws and all. The things that you just that just annoy the crap out of you. We all have to put up with this stuff. I'm sure that you've been there before. I've been there. I'm sure that you've been there. Or have you ever been there? Has it ever happened to you? Because it's definitely happened to me. <laughs> Alright, Tamara says we have to schedule due to this long distance relationship. It's hard, but it works. Exactly, Tamara. Long distance relationships really are no different at least in the state of the things that you have to do, they're different in the sense that because you guys are not living together, you don't see each other on a day-to-day, -day, there's other things that come into play when it comes to long-distance relationships. But everything with the building and shaping and building the foundation to your relationship is still the same. It might take a little bit longer to get some of these steps in place with long distance, but it's the same thing. Because at some point, you can, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but at some point, I'm assuming that you guys are going to come together and it's no longer going to be long distance. And when that happens, that's when you guys are living day in and day out with each other. But again, these expectations, don't set yourself up for failure. So now, here's what you guys can do. Your homework. Yes, let's talk about the homework. <laughs> For your expectations, write down a list of all the things that you want, that you expect out of your relationship. Write all of them down. Just do it brain dump. Don't think about them. Just write them all down. After you write them all down, you start to have the conversations with your spouse, with your boo, about each and every one of those things on your list. Not all at once, ladies. Slow it down. Not all at once. Start going through your list so you can knock all those things off your list and your partner will have a better understanding of who you are. And if you really want to make it fun, you can actually have your partner do the same thing. And then y'all talk about one thing per person, per conversation. So you talk about your expectation. He or she talks about their expectation. And then y'all start going down the list so y'all can knock this thing out. So y'all understand each other. Have a better uh, relationship. And you don't have to worry about being a mind reader. And your spouse also does not have to worry about being a mind reader. All right, I will see you guys here around the same time tomorrow for day 22 of the 30-day challenge. Deuces, y'all. <laughs>